Welcome back! What you are about to see is the second part of my holiday painting. Or I could say my latest experiment in how to create an enjoyable video out of the creation process of my artwork. In the first video I spent about an hour with creating the base for my idea, brainstorming, sketching, explaining the design and the story that I wanted to show. Really briefly, this is a picture of Cho Chang and Cedric Diggory dancing on the Yule Ball during the events of the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire novel. I titled this picture The Last Dance of the Raven and the Badger and I put extra effort into designing the outfits of the two characters with the colors of their houses. Cho has a bronze and blue dress that resembles the feathers of an eagle and the sky. Cedric has a suit in yellow and black that resemble wet and soil. The way they dance together, with Cho being lifted into the air, they form a landscape in the middle of the Great Hall. The first video became so long, I had to split it in two halves. Now, I had to realize that I bumped into a huge issue in the second half. I will talk about that later, but for now let's follow the formula until the video still works the way I wanted it to work, then I'll tell you all about it. Hi, this is two days later, I didn't progress much yesterday, but we're still going good. I just wanted to really quickly show what I did so far. First of all, I finished the sandwich version of the characters when, you know, everything is kept at separate layers. I don't remember hearing anyone saying that I just called it that way. So what I did, this was my first sketch and I cleaned it up and also I colorized it. Here we have the blush for the faces of the characters. Details of the faces and we have two layers of shadow, once the giant environmental shadow and the local little shadows that are mostly just showing the little details of the characters and one layer of light. I also rescaled the canvas, now it's 4000 by 4000 pixels. It was the half of that, but I realized that uh, detailing these faces are uh, going to be pretty hard. I'll obviously need to clean these lines a little bit up once more, but it's going to be fine. I will also patch up some anatomy errors that I already saw. Other than the characters, I made this snow effect. We have a bunch of layers in one group. I modified this brush, so it's going to give me these elongated brush strokes that kinda already look like snowflakes. Apply the motion blur effect on them. Then I added one more, another layer of these motion blur, third layer motion blur. Snowflakes that are at different distances from the viewer. I also added this transparency mask with a simple gradient, so it makes the bottom part of this group transparent, so snowflakes that are higher are more illuminated and the others are just blending into the background. And there's an extra fog layer, but talking about the background, most of it is just abstract brush strokes and one Gaussian blur layer. Also in the animation I'm going to completely change this layer into animated snow layer, but uh, that, that will come much later. And here's one extra volumetric light, so there is some fog between us and the characters, balances out the picture so there's not just a giant light and dark divide on the canvas. The most important thing that I want to do right now is resizing some proportions of these characters. In Krita 5, if I remember correctly, about a year ago, they gave us the opportunity to use the transform tool on an entire group. I can just move this part without disrupting my layers. I'm going to put it there and uh, resize it a little bit and also it's going to require some patchwork. One mistake that I always make is that I make the characters really elongated, really tall. I don't know, it's just a bad habit that I picked up sometime along the years, but th this version of the character is much, much closer to how he should look. And also we have to do the same thing with show as well. I'm going to move this part and maybe that might be even enough. Let me just show you. So this is the head and that uh, one, two, three, that is where the crotch area should be. So that's mostly correct. I am going to do this one as well because there's like a double foreshortening going on. Oops. The upper legs are facing towards us as her body is rotating and the lower legs are bent backwards. So they are facing away from us. This is going to make the legs appear a little bit 
shorter. I really wanted to fix that and not leave these two just proportions of the face. This distance is about the same as this one, which is about the same as this one to the hairline. I actually had this issue with faces as well that I always elongated them and I kind of think that I moved past that. Other than that I'm just going to do a really quick rendering here. Also I'm thinking about uh, that I should refine this sketch a bit more first. I always get into this trouble that I simply skip this part way too soon and I'm just going to try to fix everything through the rendering but while they could have been really easily fixed much before that. So I don't want to run in unnecessary circles. And uh, that is my uh, plan, we will see how it goes. But first let's clean up all this mess. All these little stupid overlaps. And now we arrive to the issue that I was talking about. Sorry for this interruption, but I feel that this is important for me to address the problem and figure out how to solve it. This is really the combination of two issues. One is that I spent a ridiculously long time just talking and trying to paint at the same time. I spent about 40 minutes to just trying to figure out what to do with the outfits on camera. And it is something that can't make the cut in my opinion. I literally wasted both my own time and the runtime of the video on something that I can say in under a minute. So I'll just do that to demonstrate. I created a gradient on the suit of Cedric. The top part of his outfit is starting out in a wet pattern and later I'll add the individual plants that are sticking out of it and it transitions into black which is the soil underneath. The dress of Cho is mostly a blue dress with a little amount of abstract pattern. The important part of it are the sleeves. They are covered in eagle feathers. They are not real feathers but the cloth is charmed to look like that and individual feathers are falling out of it as the wearer is dancing only to disappear into the air but they give off the impression of real feathers falling from the dress. That's it. I spent about 40 minutes telling you that in the recording while trying to figure out on the spot how I wanted to implement all of this. It is something that can be done in the initial sketch phase, but as you progress it just becomes more and more hard to actually say something meaningful while you are doing the thing. This is only the first issue. The second one is that the second one is the 6 to 10 hours of footage after this part. I just worked on it without saying anything since the only things I could have been repeating are let's detail this, let's fix this part, let's add this little thing. So I ended up with a lot of footage that needs to go to the cutting room floor or into my uh, garbage can on the desktop because I'm not working with actual film, you know, stuff. Now what can I do instead? Learn from the mistake that I just made here. I made a list of rules for me to follow next time and I'll hopefully end up with something that I wanted. One. Only work and talk at the same time during the sketch phase. This is going to be mostly fine until I don't overdo it. This is the part where the most things happen and the most I can really speak about what I'm doing in the moment. 2. Later in the process I can't do brainstorming and trying out things as I'm talking if I don't want to end up with an enormous amount of junk that I need to painfully edit into a segment that is still really long with exponentially less actual content every hour I pass. 3. I need to stop more times to talk about the things I'm doing at the moment. More than just once or twice if needed, but I must not overdo it. Whenever I do, I have to just talk or scribble things, but not make any actual process during these talk breaks. I can say every single little detail while editing but when I stop the only things I need to say out are my current thoughts and the direction in which I want to continue. 4. 
I might be able to use the screen recording. I'll need to try it out next time since it gives me more room, but it will most likely make the videos too bloated if I'm not careful enough. I'll try using short clips of it alongside the recording that Krita makes. 5. There's another way, but uh, it's the extra long format. I wanted to follow the formula of the old Borodante videos, but in order to keep them consistent, I need to be present through the whole process. This way I can make either long videos of small pictures, definitely smaller than this one, or I can make the paint throughs as Boro called them. Entire series of videos about a project that might even become multiple hours long in total. I really need to be careful with that format, but I'll definitely want to try it out in the future. Six. I would like to apologize, <laughs> this video just became something really different. I just wanted to make this commentary mostly for myself to collect the thoughts about how I want these videos to work. I'll make a short version of this painting to make a genuinely wholesome video of this of this project, just squish it into a YouTube short or maybe a two-parter, so something like two minutes. I see. Sorry once again, I need to admit that I failed to make the video that I wanted. But let's hope that right now I'm making the video I needed. That was super cringe. Awful, but needed. Horrible, but necessary. <laughs> we are at the end of the video and the only thing that remains is the animation. I kept it simple because of time constraints, but I made some snow in Blender. I'll leave a link to the tutorial I've followed in the description. And then I added a panning and a stretching in my video editing software to give it a fake 2.5D animation. One of my goals to the next year is to figure out how to work more with 2.5D animations to give a bit more life to my works, and I'll most likely make videos of this too. And now this is it. Thank you very much for watching. I know that this second half of this project uh, ended up becoming something uh, really different. I was editing this second half, but I came to the realization that it is not going to work the way I imagined and kind of the way I promised in the last episode, so it was another hard decision, but I thought that I would prefer to turn this video into a completely different one and one where I actually explain what happened instead of just trying to carry on and uh, pretend that the video I put out was okay, while it clearly wasn't. Either way, if you are seeing this, I love you and I cannot say enough thanks to you that you are here because it means everything to me. I know this uh, sounds like big words, but you know how it goes. It is technically the 26th, so you might be able to have a little bit of the rest of the holidays if, if you are watching this right now, like when I upload it. So I hope that you had a nice time and I hope that you're going to have a happy new year. I will definitely be coming back with one video this year before the 31st because I have a deadline for a video. The point is that I will be back with more videos in the future and if you are going to be here and you will be someone who is going to watch them, that uh, is something that I cannot even express how much it would mean to me, so you know what to do. And I thank you very much for watching, have a nice day, do some art and most importantly have fun while doing that. Farewell. Um, just a little side note, I accidentally messed up my airbrush and I'm struggling to find the original, uh, the original settings. So, um, yes, accidents happen.